Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is your first time visiting. Firstly, thank you so much for the lovely response um, to my past two videos. I've had lots of recommendations for videos about hair and about makeup, those are coming. Um, but today I thought I would talk about my experience at university um, and specifically what it was like in a London university and a UK university. I also went to Spain and studied there, so we can touch on that. I I will start off by saying that I am glad that I went to university. Do I think it is worth a 40 grand loan with 6.3% interest? I'm not so sure. Um, but I'm gonna but I am gonna discuss all of the pros and cons with you. Um, and at the end of the day, had I not gone to university, I would not be making videos on YouTube, I think, or definitely not English videos. So let's start from the beginning, school. When I was quite young, so probably between 14 and 16, my sort of GCSE age, um, I thought I wanted to do something maybe medical related. I got quite high GCSEs and my school kind of said, well, because you did so well in your sciences, you'd be silly not to do medicine. And so in sixth form, I decided to study biology, chemistry, and then Spanish and economics, I think. And I ended up hating chemistry and biology so deeply <laughs> that I decided that medicine wasn't for me. I knew I wanted to go into business and I wanted to go in a sort of creative direction because I'd always been really, really creative. Um, and I decided that something I was really, really interesting was marketing and advertising, more specifically advertising. I just wanted to go and do a university course where I could study the art of advertising. My dream was to create adverts and create marketing campaigns and sell things and talk about products that I was really interested in. Um, so I decided to go down the marketing route, but I don't know whether it was my specific generation, but there just didn't seem to be courses specific to advertising. I think there was like one in the UK and it had really high entry grades that I was realistically not going to achieve. I think it was at Bournemouth University and they wanted like AAB. And when I took biology and chemistry, I wasn't gonna get that. So I decided to focus on marketing. And I remember that the top universities really didn't have straight marketing options. None of the red brick universities did. They all had business with a side of marketing or something like that. So um, my options definitely weren't universities that I was passionate about. I think I chose Greenwich, Westminster, Birmingham, one of the Birmingham universities, Leicester or Lincoln, I'm not sure, and another one. So they weren't spectacular universities, but at the time they were the only options I had. Now I've been looking at universities and they seem to have a course for everything, but I think that's another issue. They have a course for everything and not everything needs a course. <laughs> Something that I was also really, really passionate about was Spanish. I studied Spanish at school. I had a Spanish boyfriend and I was just absolutely obsessed with learning Spanish, improving my Spanish, going to Spain. I used to work really hard at a pub at the weekends to save money to go and do language courses in Spain whenever I could in the half terms. Um, I actually forwent a girl's holiday just to do one of those. <laughs> yeah, I was obsessed with it and I think it's just, I was a small, I was from a small village there was nothing going on and I just wanted a little bit of adventure, but I wanted adventure with meaning. I didn't want to just go traveling. I wanted to integrate into society and work there and challenge myself. So I looked at all the courses and I worked out which ones gave me the opportunity to travel as part of my degree. I was really, really into time management. I didn't want to waste a single year. Um, so I didn't want to take a year off and go traveling. Um, I didn't want to, there was the option of doing like an extra year studying in another country and I just thought that was stupid because I was like well why would I do an extra year studying if I could do an extra year working because in marketing a degree is you know good to have but really what you want is experience. Um, so the Westminster course offered the second semester of your second year 
you could do something called Erasmus. Um, and when I did it, I, um, I got a grant. So I think I got 350 euros a month um, just for doing my course in Spain. Uh, and then afterwards I was meant to do a placement year and I said, could I do this placement year in Spain? And they said, well, if you find it all yourself and sort it out yourself, then yes, you can. Ah, and one extra thing is that as part of my degree, I could study a language. So, so some of my credits could be from studying another language. It was a program called Polylang. So instead of doing like marketing metrics or something really, really boring, I could instead study Italian. So I did Italian levels one, two, and three. So I thought, well, great, this course gives me the maximum amount of time in Spain. And I also walk out with a degree, a semester studying in a foreign language in a foreign country, and a full year of work experience in the marketing field in another language in another country. And I was like, well, in four years, I'm going to walk out with all of these things under my belt. And I was gonna walk out with a third language, which is Italian. So I decided to go to Westminster. Now, I, I'm not one of those people that says no regrets, because obviously I do regret certain things. I wouldn't change anything that I've done, um, and I wouldn't change having gone to Westminster because I'm so unbelievably happy where I am now, doing the job I'm, I'm doing now, running my business. I would have met Will, I wouldn't have Diego, my dog, all of these things. I wouldn't change anything, like the butterfly effect. However, if I, I think I probably would have had more fun at a campus university or a non-London university because I compare my university experience to that of my friends and that of my fiance, and they are vastly different. So my campus was based in Baker Street, opposite Madame Tussauds, and they said that for all of the first years, we were going to live on campus in a block of flats in that Marlebone area. Um, and I was really excited about that because I thought, oh my God, imagine being 18 living in the centre of London, like everything's walking distance, just being able to pop down and go to uni. I thought it sounded ideal. The flats looked tiny, but I didn't care. I was just really, really excited and keen to go. To my dismay, a couple of months before um, we were all set to go, they told us that there was a change of plan and they, that actually all of the first years had to live in Wembley. Now, I'm not hating on Wembley. Wembley has developed amazingly now, but back when we lived there, it was barren. There was nothing, not a, not a restaurant. It was just, you know, fried food shops and independent supermarkets. Our student halls were next to the Hilton Hotel, next to the Wembley Stadium. Um, and there was loads of construction and development Will and I went back the other day to watch something at Wembley Arena. We were opposite the arena um, and I didn't recognise it. I just, did, I was like, wow, I did not recognise any of this, that none of this was here. There's a shopping centre here now. There are loads of bars, restaurants, a Pret-a-Manger. I would have killed for that at uni. There was absolutely nothing. There was one Tesco Express and a small gym opened up. No pubs, nothing. So I went from thinking I was going to live in zone one to living in zone four um, where the night bus would take an hour to get home um, if you missed the final tube, and yeah, it really wasn't great. Yes, the accommodation was nice. It was all brand new. I think it cost me 600 a month, or 650 a month, um, for an ensuite bedroom in a shared flat of six people. Um, and looking back, that was a very good price-ish, but it was just, it was just rubbish. It really was rubbish. Um, there were no social events. There were no university socials or anything. There was just no social life. You had to develop your own social life outside of university. Yes, I did meet people in my halls of residence. I did have some great friends there. Um, but Westminster seems like quite a fleeting place. A lot of people left um, and moved to other universities. There were a lot of international students, which was great. I loved meeting all the international students, but a lot of them were just staying for one year. Um, 
or a lot of them had a lot of them had their own lives and lived with their parents still um, so the chances are the people in your class were not going to be people that you lived with in your halls and also we had to travel into Baker Street every day from Wembley which was a bit of a it was a bit rubbish because it was quite a long walk to the train station I would say that Westminster the general vibe is that I felt like I was going to work. I was going to an office environment. I would go there, do my business, leave and not socialise. There wasn't a bar. There was a small canteen area. Um, the standard of teaching was... I think in the first year, I didn't really see the point of everything I was... We did a module on law, um, which was good to have a basis on that. I can't, there wasn't that much to do with marketing in the first year and then the first year didn't count anyway which I thought was a bit pointless. The second year however, I was only there for half a year because then I went to Madrid. Um, the second year was a lot more related to marketing but the biggest issue for me was the way they relied on group projects and okay if you're in a campus uni maybe that's a bit easier but a lot of people in my um, uni were from all different parts of the city, all living their own lives, a lot of them had their own families, a lot of them were international so were leaving and going back to their own countries and then coming back again. Managing and running a group project was really frustrating. I hate group projects and I thought it was me. I just thought, you know what, when I finally work with a team when I'm older I'm just gonna hate it so I need to work alone for the rest of my life. Well, I've worked in teams and I've absolutely loved it because everyone's at work, everyone's paid to be there, everyone knows that they absolutely can't fail. But I think in university, people have this sort of feeling that they can, oh, you know, I can always retake it or, oh, you know, they can just do the work for me. I found that really frustrating. I must say, however, a lot of the projects that we did, I have now used in my career. So we had a really good tutor called Daryl. <laughs> And he made us do like a marketing plan and develop a marketing, there was like a brief and he made us develop a marketing plan and do a whole project about developing a product. And it was so useful. And I used the templates from that project for a brief that I submitted to a brand and I got a big brand deal from them. It was a huge international brand. Um, and so that was really, really useful. As far as the social life in London, I was friends with a lot of gay people, so we went to a lot of gay bars. We loved GAY because the drinks were so cheap. And um, yeah, I had a boyfriend, so I wasn't really that interested in meeting people. Um, in second year, I did become a bit more interested in meeting people because I was single um, and I started going on dates, but I didn't end up really meeting anyone from my own university. The second half of second year, I went to Universidad Complutense in Madrid um, and I did marketing and public relations, marketing and PR. Um, and I chose, I opted to do it in Spanish. Um, I was already fluent in Spanish um, and I just wanted a challenge. I just wanted to see what it was like. I was really, really curious at how the education system was in Spain and not to be a negative Nelly, but I thought it was really, really bad. Um, Instead of doing projects, which were, you know, you could apply to your actual life and your future career, we were just told to memorise as much information as we possibly could and then just regurgitate it all onto an exam paper at the end of the semester and everyone failed and everyone just had to retake it and retake it and retake it until eventually they passed. And there were people finishing, you know, finishing three year and four year degrees in six or seven years. It was ridiculous. But... There was definitely more of a social life in Madrid. I definitely had ch the chance to meet more Spanish people and they definitely had way more fun than the students did in London. So I think an integration of the two things would be good. Yeah, so I think if the Spanish system combined with the UK system, we had more of a social life. Um, but it was less about just memorising and regurgitating information, more about stuff that you can apply and things that you will actually use in your career, um, then that would be a really great mix. Looking back at my time at university, there were a couple of tutors, and this is both in Spain and in London, that I just think, how did you get paid to do absolutely nothing? I'm not kidding you, there was a tutor who fell asleep 
in our final um, presentations. And I'm, I'm not joking, he did. And we were all really, really angry. And we submitted an official complaint. Um, there was, in Madrid, there was a guy who just spoke about how interested he was in silver auctions the whole time. And then the exam was a multiple choice um, test on some sort of calculation. It was called marketing metrics or something like that. And everyone was just so obviously cheating in the exam. People were passing around bits of paper, people were going, tss, tss, hey, what is? And I just, I was shocked. You know, if you cheated or anything in the UK exams, I mean, it would have been very, very you just couldn't. There were people walking up and down, but we were all just sat in a lecture theater and everyone was exchanging answers. Um, both education systems are flawed um, and I feel like it's a bit of a con. It's like something you have to do to get your foot in the door uh, with a career. So I then did my placement year. It ended up going wrong. That's why I went into teaching, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And then I went back to um, university for my third year in London. This was my final year. Now, because London is so expensive to live in, I had to work throughout my degree. So in my first year, I worked in a juice bar. And then in the summer, I did an internship at that same juice bar in the marketing department. And um, second year, I worked in an organic and natural skincare shop, which I've mentioned before. Um, and in my third year, I set up my own teaching business. And then obviously I set up the YouTube channel. So one great thing about studying in London is that I was making the absolute most of my time. I was always going to uni, working, and having a side hustle so it, I was really really getting a lot of experience and in London there is so much there are so many opportunities uh, you have to reach for them yourself if I just sat in my room I wouldn't have got a marketing internship and I wouldn't have set up my YouTube channel and I wouldn't have worked in a shop that I just adored you know and I wouldn't have been able to go to Madrid and do all the placement years you know you do have to be really really active in your approach and I hate wasting time so that's what I did in Madrid, I found it really hard to get a job. I think the crisis, the recession was still really affecting them. Um, so I ended up teaching English as well and that was a good option for me. So when I moved into my third year, because most people hadn't done a placement year, they'd all graduated and I didn't really know anyone. Um, and unfortunately, my first week of term, I had gastroenteritis, which if, if you've ever had it, you know that it is awful it was intestinal, an intestinal virus, and it was vile, and I couldn't go into university. So when I finally went, all of the groups had been set, so I was put in groups um, with the, all the other people that didn't turn up for the first week of university. And one of the girls I was teamed up with was amazing, but the rest were they were basically the people that no one wanted to be with because they'd seen that in year two and year one, they hadn't done anything. And I kid you not, there was a guy who turned up to a presentation and we'd never met him before. And we tried to not let him participate, but the teacher said that he had to. So he just stood there and was like, what do I say? And we were like, ugh. Uh, he also did the same with the final project as well. Um, and the only way, way that we caught him out was we did it on a Google document. Um, and we had the whole list of all of the edits and his name didn't appear once. He still passed the subject though, he only got 40%. <laughs> my last year, I divided my time between working, I ran those English classes, and then in January, at the beginning of the second semester, I started my YouTube channel and I did put in quite a lot of effort. Um, so I was running the channel, um, teaching English, I was doing quite a lot actually. <laughs> and going to university and studying for my exams and everything. That was an intense month. Um, I felt really low, broken up with my then boyfriend yet again, and I was just feeling a bit lonely in London, and a bit like, what's the point? And I was just desperate to move back to Spain. But I got it done, I studied really hard, and much to my surprise, I graduated with a first class degree. Um, and the reason being, I didn't think, I was really striving to get a 2-1 and I thought that that was maybe out of my reach, but I underestimated how lenient they would be on marking the exams. So I was predicting myself to get like 60% in the exams, but I ended up getting 80s and 90s, which I didn't even think were possible because the marking on the projects was so strict. 
but that's just the way it worked um, and I was really really happy to get a first. Accommodation wise in the second year I moved in with my best friend and we just got a flat together to a two bedroom flat in Waterloo or Lambeth North Waterloo and in the third year um, I moved to Kilburn West Hampstead and just joined a flat share with two other professionals two guys one was Spanish one was Italian and because they were out in the day it meant that I could use the living area to run classes and to film my videos during the day so that worked really really well I was always really careful to clear it all up now I was desperate to have a career in marketing but when my channel started to grow I was really really excited because what I do essentially is marketing I pitch to big brands I do sponsorships I have to sell things I have to sell myself um, I absolutely love it and so in July just after graduating I had a chat with my dad and he said look I think you should give the channel two years and if after those two years nothing's happened then quit it he says but he said um, I think you'll be able to gauge pretty quickly whether it's going to go somewhere or not and it mushroomed <laughs> literally in the September I moved back home with them in the September and in February I got my own flat and moved to Cambridge so yeah it worked really well I was really fortunate um, in that sense I did work really hard and I was very stressed for a lot of that time now would I ever do a master's degree I 100% think I would not um, I I think that although going to university opened a lot of doors for me I don't think that I learnt um, I think what I learnt in university I could have easily learnt in just working a year in industry. Um, doing this has taught me so much more than sitting in a classroom and studying. I think university is great for subjects like you know for sciences and for very difficult subjects where you need absolute experts in their field um, but I'm not sure that marketing is one of those subjects. However, I feel like a lot of people feel the need to have a degree and you know, I'm not going to dissuade them from going for it. What about the fees? So my university was nine grand a year. Um, I got some sort of discount and it was eight grand a year. And then I had the living, living costs. I had a living grant and a maintenance loan. Uh, and all in all, I graduated with about 40K debt. Um, that's now grown because the interest rate has changed to 6.3% <laughs> which uh, we didn't know at the time and they have been sold on to another country, a company. However, the way we pay back our student loans in the UK is very different from the way the Americans do. I think their system is just terrible and I feel so sorry for Americans that don't have parents to pay for their education. In the UK, very few parents pay for your education. There's just no point because you only pay back 9% um, of what you earn over 25 grand. So if you earn 100K a year, then yes, you will be paying back a big chunk um, of your loan. But if you earn 29K, well then you'll only pay 9% of that 4K. So it, a lot of people won't end up paying back their loans at all. Um, a lot of people that are middle to high earners will pay back a lot more uh, than what their loan really was before interest um, and a lot of the really high earners will just pay it off quite quickly. I just see it as an extra 9% tax, like that's just the way it is. Um, tax is never fun um, but I'm glad that I know exactly where that 9% is going and I'm happy to get it down with such high interest rates. Now, do I, have I maintained many of my friendships from university? No, not really, honestly. Um, I had more fleeting friendships in London. Um, I had a lot of quite intense friendships that then when we moved countries or they started to get involved in stuff that I really didn't like, um, then we, you know, cut off contact a little bit and I was happy to do so. I just never really had that many close friends in London. I had a lot of really close friends in Spain who I'm still in contact with, but London just never seemed to be a place that I found easy to make and maintain friendships. So that was my university experience. Um, I wouldn't say it was really, really positive. I wouldn't say it was really, really negative either. Um, I'm glad I went to a Spanish university as well so that I could see um, the pros and cons of the UK system. 
I think the education system as a whole is extremely flawed. Uh, and if my child decides that they don't want to go to university, uh, I will completely support that decision. And if they want to go to university for a subject that doesn't need to be taught at university, I will discuss that with them. You know, you, lose, you are investing three or four years of your life. Let's just forget about the loan and the debt. It's this time, it's your youth. And maybe you could go and work directly in a firm or maybe you could, you know, dive right into the world of business. Who knows, it's got to be the right decision for you. If you have any questions, please comment down below and feel free to share your university experience as well. I know people talk about university being so much fun and it's all about drinking and it's parties. And yes, I did have a lot of that when I was in Madrid. There was three weeks where I went out every single night and I was absolutely destroyed by the end of it. Um, I had a lot of fun. In London, I had loads of fun in the first year, but then year two, in year two and three, I had to be less of a student and more of an adult because I was just, I had to work. <laughs> so I couldn't go out every night, I couldn't afford to go out every night and I had to work hard. And I also had other aspirations. I was never at university just to have fun. Otherwise I would have gone to a campus university. Right, that really is it for today. Um, don't forget to connect with me on my social media. I've got my Instagram and I've got my Twitter and I shall see you soon for another video. Mwah.